In a world where the cost of video games is escalating higher and higher thanks to pricing models that are centered around paying for the vanilla experience and then slathering it in goopy microtransactional extras, getting value for money is becoming harder to quantify. Some games are hiding truly beefy content right within their code, just waiting to be unlocked. Better still, the games on this list hid entire campaigns for you to lose yourself in for hours. So let's take a look at them as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight secret campaigns hidden in video games. Number 8. Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars When you first load up the outstandingly fun Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars game, you might be expecting a classic showdown between continents scrapping over precious resources. And of course, who can build the most nukes, especially seeing as this has all been well established in the prior games. You probably didn't expect for an alien invasion to come and just ruin the radiation party, right? Well, that's exactly what happens come the midsection of this game, with the screen descending to harvest both the Tiberium material from the planet and evict its current owners with rather horrific force. Even more shocking than their arrival, though, is the knowledge that upon completing both sides of the GDI and Brotherhood of Nod campaigns, that you actually unlock a secret third campaign, this time detailing things from the perspective of the Skrin as they obliterate everything on the planet. It's a fun power swing as this faction has access to some truly brutal units and abilities, and acts for a great stress reliever after battling against them and being on the back foot for so bloody long. Number 7. Near Automata so let's get this straight, I absolutely adore Near Automata Potato Potata. This is a title that is completely unafraid to just be itself, and the sheer confidence it exudes in its brilliant battle mechanics and utterly insane storytelling pulls the player down the rabbit hole, making for one of the wildest experiences in recent memory. After all, what other games let you battle the CEO of Platinum Games and Square Enix themselves? Not that many, I'd wager. However, before we lose our minds at moments designed to well, utterly break them, let's talk about how utterly brilliant the pacing of the game's narrative structure is. After completing what you assume to be the only section of the game as 2B, the title then offers up a remix of the events with you now playing as 9S, bringing with it new gameplay mechanics to make things feel completely fresh. However, just as you're settling into this story and seeing it through to the end, the title hints that maybe you should play through the game just one more time, and by doing so, you best be prepared to take a sword to your heart, because it turns out that everything you thought you knew about the game is about to be upended, as soon you'll take control of another character, A2, and begin another brand new adventure. Seriously, this is the game that keeps on giving. Number 6. Every Tenchu Game Back when the stealth genre of video games was slitting throats and making sure the world definitely took notes, the Tenchu franchise sat very near the top of the pile thanks to its brilliant blend of high-level thought that was required to trick guards in progress unseen and indeed brutal combat that could break out at a moment's notice. The setting, the atmosphere and of course the incredible bag of tricks that you had at your disposal made Tenchu a household name, that is until it disappeared into the shadows come Tenchu Shadow Assassins. However, its legacy and indeed approach to unlockable content will always be held in high regard by many. One of the reoccurring principles that this series carried was in how completing the main story mode with all playable characters characters would unlock a brand new playthrough from the perspective of either a secondary antagonist or otherwise NPC ally. What was great is that these stories run parallel to the events of the main game, explaining why certain puzzles were left in a half-finished state, why guards were eliminated in certain areas, or why things ended up being made more difficult than they should have been for our main heroes. Number 5. Shadow the Hedgehog It's a mad world in which we live when Shadow the Hedgehog is a video game even more utterly off the rails than even the absolute disaster piece that was Sonic 06, but here we are. I mean, where do we even begin with this monster? How about the fact that the game starts with an alien invasion, or the fact that Shadow is now a gun-toting edgelord, or how he might actually be an android clone, or how he's got amnesia, and can even choose to work with the big evil to doom the world itself? There's more insanity going on in this game's opening sections than most titles fit into 40 hours, and that's to say nothing of the stunning realization that this game has 10 different endings, and you're going to need to see each of them in order to unlock the final campaign mission. 
Here, after what must be countless hours of gameplay and enough crisscrossing of timelines to confuse even a theoretical physicist, you see Black Doom use Chaos Control to bring a black comet to Earth. You then need to stop the villain from using every human on the planet to power their alien race, and indeed further their conquest of the galaxy. What follows is arguably the best section of the game, in which you have to battle against a huge alien force riding a flying worm for a while, which turns the game into an on-rail shooter. It's utter insanity, but the final story mission you unlock truly is the game running on pure banter mode. Number 4. Dynasty Warriors 7 the Dynasty Warriors games, despite effectively being the same game over and over, and I can say this because I'm a massive fan and have bought every single version, aren't ones to shy away from adding in tons of new content with each and every iteration. Whether it's adding in new Warriors of Legends for fans to fall in love with or indeed end up despising, switching up establishing characters, move sets, and weapons, or just completely reinventing stages and events, it feels like Dynasty Warriors is a franchise constantly revising its own history, becoming more more and more outlandish in the process. However, Dynasty Warriors 7 deserves special mention when it comes to killer content being tucked away, as it ended up hiding an entire campaign from Japanese fans upon its release. In the run-up to the title's launch, the developers promised to show off events that fans had never seen before, and this translated into the Jin storyline, which follows the events of the faction that finally brought China together as one. However, whereas most fans assumed that it would just slot into the events of the other major faction stories, lines of Wu, Shu, and Wei, it turned out that these three story modes would need to have been completed before a fourth unlocked itself for one final showdown. In subsequent releases, this was changed so that Jin was available from the start, but still, for fans thinking that they'd seen it all and done it all only to unlock this massive campaign, well that must have been quite the surprise. Number 3. Spider-Man The Movie The Spider-Man video game movie tie-in had no right being as good as it was. In a world awash with terrible low effort, um, squad jobs, this title swung high above the mire in terms of quality and, of course, in terms of hidden content. Plus, it contained the vocal butter of Bruce Campbell as the narrator, so how could you not love this experience? Making things even better, though, were, indeed, the unlockables, which ranged from alternate costumes to mini-movies and even the outstanding bowling minigame, which is still a joy to play after all of these years. But still, the absolute cream of the crop comes in the form of a full unlockable second story that lets you take control of none other than the Green Frickin' Goblin. Well, technically, you're playing as the second Green Goblin, Harry Osborn, as he straps on the glider in order to research his father's death. Now, while it would have been easy for the devs to have just slotted the character in and called it a day, the narrative had actually been reworked and re-recorded to fit this new character, meaning that while the game does play out over the same levels, it ends up feeling completely unique. Nice one. Number 2. Anarchy Reigns If you've never played the absolutely over-the-top title that is Anarchy Reigns, then buckle in, my friend, because we're about to go on a wild ride. This spiritual successor to the Wii Splatterfest title Mad World sees Jack Kamen return to center stage. This time, though, he's a washing color, mostly blood red thanks to the copious amounts of violence, and brings with him a cast of 16 other playable characters, all of whom are split into factions and all of which come into conflict as often as you've had hot dinners. The main narrative splits things into black and white sides, each telling different stories and how events played out from the other perspective. And come the close of both, you're left feeling battered and bruised, but ultimately victorious over the main antagonist, Douglas. However, that's when the game offers up another brutal uppercut, as it's then revealed that there is a secret red side campaign that sees Jack and other main protagonist, Leo, square off against each other before taking on a secret and much more powerful final boss. These final levels are brutally tough when compared to the rest of the game, and seeing as this wasn't exactly a walk in the park to begin with, this short extra narrative packs one hell of a punch. And number one, Wario Land 2. Now, it might not look it from the outset, but the dinky Game Boy cartridge of Wario Land 2 houses a startlingly chunky amount of content for players looking to pig out on platforming and treasure collecting bliss. But then again, Wario himself is all about excess, so is it really that surprising to learn that this game has an entire hidden end set? 
section within it. Now, technically, while this might count as a level rather than a campaign, the game itself lists this section as the really final chapter. And seeing as each other chapter is a self-contained experience, I'm willing to bend the rules slightly here. Plus, it's that ludicrously weird, I feel that it deserves a mention. After seeing off the Black Sugar Gang and retrieving all 50 treasures hidden throughout the base game, Wario will inform the player that it is indeed time to return home and count his loot. Along the way, though, he spots a new area to explore and proceeds to do what he does best, and that is smash through and cause absolute chaos. This section is by far the most challenging area of the game and features some truly bizarre level geometry, with eyes and ears embedded into the wall, along with petrified remains of enemies. What the hell was going on here? And if you can make it through this gauntlet and pass the final boss, a massive bag of treasure awaits, making for the perfect reward for our gluttonous no good Nick. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight secret campaigns that were hidden in video games. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. That's Dice with a C over on YouTube, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. I hope that you are treating yourself well, both mentally and physically, because you deserve love, happiness, and respect, all of the good things in life. Yes, you do, my friend. Do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? You're a massive ledge. Now go out there and utterly smash it. I believe in you. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.